Okay, so I'm back. Hopefully everybody can hear me still uh, within the chat. If you can, just you know, say yes. Um, but I'm going to show you uh, what we did yesterday. This is something you could do, what you're going to be doing within Chapter 2 of um, this lesson. And uh, hopefully everybody who did Chapter 1 with me, we made a table together. So I'm hoping everybody has that table set because that's going to actually be another project we're going to work on. But here's what you will be able to do in Chapter 2 if you haven't seen uh, from yesterday. Just a simple animation using some simple uh, methods. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. Um, so we'll start a new one. And uh, for this we'll just take the grass. And then just hit open. Okay, now chapter 2 gets more in depth. We're, this is where now the programming, you're actually going to start using methods. In chapter 1 we learned how to put an object into the world, uh, move the camera around that object, and uh, actually move um, certain parts of the object through the object editor um, by rotating it and uh, all that good stuff. Now we're going to be able to use methods to actually have the uh, object move on its own without us physically doing it. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. Basically before I start, I know in chapter 1 I, I told everybody about this too, but if you look here in your event window also in your uh, method editor and your world detail or your detailed toolbar or um, window detailed object detailed window um, you'll see you have my first method same here but you see a dot and you see a dot here but you don't see it here I'll, t I'll explain why you don't see it here this this is a dot notation Basically, uh, what programmers like to refer to is um, it just separates pieces of information. So in this case, on the left side of the dot notation, we have object, and that just means what the object of the method belongs to, of that method. And on the right side is the name of the method. So if you look here, we have my first method is the name of the method, and then we have world, which is the name of the object that the method belongs to. So my first method belongs to the world object. Now how do we change that? Because you know, okay, this ain't my first method anymore. You know, I'm, I'm going to create something now. I don't want it to say that. Well, what you do is you're going to click world, and you're going to come down to where it says methods, and uh, you, you should see my first method. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to edit that. You can add different ones. You can always create a new one uh, and just have it, you know, if you, this, is, this is if you get more in-depth, we'll create more um, methods within that same world. But we're not going to go into that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to rename this. So we're going to right-click it, rename it, and we're going to title this one. Uh, let's see what we're going to mess with later. We'll just say animation. Remember, keep it lowercase. Um, in programming, it is uh, a little picky with uppercase and lowercase. Just, just a keynote, try to keep everything lowercase if you remember that. It's going to help you in the long run. Also, as you saw, that said my first method with spaces. In real programming such as C++ and Java, spacing is not allowed. So you have to uh, just get familiarized with not using spaces. Uh, again, this is just, that's how they set it up because you're allowed to use spaces in uh, Alice, but for a note and for future reference, don't put any spaces. You'll mess up your program that way. Uh, but what we'll, you'll be able to do is, I'll show you in a little bit, how you can actually, you might want to put like three words and you're going to be like, okay, well, how will somebody know animation first step? 
if I was to write that because I can't use spaces. Well, I'm going to teach you some uh, ways that you can actually write that. Okay? So, for our first little thing, our first method that we're going to start to do is we're going to go and grab an object. And we are going to look for, a, I think it's under animals. We're going to look for a uh, kangaroo. There it is. Okay, maybe that's a rabbit. Oh, there's the roo. There we go. That's a little bit better. And again, if you remember from the first lesson, parts just stands for he has 13 different parts. Um, okay, the book actually wants me to use the hair. Even though it looks like a kangaroo, it wants me to use the hair, it says. So we're going to add him into our world. And now, he, we're in, uh, he's in our world. Now what we want to do is just hit done. We got him into our world, we're happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the hair. Again, here's our bounding box, if you guys remember from the first lesson. That's the his dimension area. And uh, if you remember the lines and everything I taught you, we'll get closer. Blue is uh, forward, red is right, green is up. Also remember, his center point is right in his uh, waistline, or above his waistline. It's not down at the, uh, at the bottom, like we did with the coach. So always remember where that center point is, because wherever you move him, uh, if it's moving on that center point, you've got to remember he's going to twist and turn from that center point, not from the bottom. So in this case, we want to, um, for the first lesson of uh, dragging our methods, going to click, like I said, click here. If you come down to methods, here is where we're going to give it an action, a command, which is, that's what a method is called. It's basically a command that we're telling the uh, object to do. So we're going to take move and drag it into our method editor. Now it's going to ask us two variables. Where do we want it to go by direction and how much? So let's make him go up one meter. We're going to make him jump up for one meter. If you want to make it more, we'll go to other, you'll get a little noon pad, uh, keypad, whatever you want to call it, and uh, you can edit your own number. But uh, for here, we're just going to keep it one. We're going to have him jump up once. Okay, so we're going to play this and we're going to see him jump. Now, he's stuck. Uh, you know, because we haven't told him to come back down. And if you notice, it looks kind of, eh, looks like he just floats. So what we're going to do is you'll see here's more. It gives you more options that you can get more into detail. You can have a style, see how do you want the camera to be, you know, how you want it to be seen by. And then, you know, this is uh, scale by size, but that we're not going to mess with yet. A lot of this is all way in future for three and four. But what we're going to do is mess with the duration. How fast do we want that jump to occur? Right now it's set to one second. It seems like he just floats. So we're going to do 0.5. Now what that'll do is make his jump faster. So now that actually looks like he's jumping up into the air and not just floating magically. So, again, I said, look, he went up, but he didn't come down. So what we want to do is you have two options. You could click here and drag another move and we could hit down or because I'm going to be telling you this later on again you could right click and make a copy because we already want to keep the same numbers um, so it, it's a lot easier to just copy but because I don't want to get there yet we're going to drag in another move we're going to make him go down one meter and uh, we're going to click more and make it the same, 0.5. Now if we run it, he goes up and comes down. So he jumped. Now you'll look if in your method, we, we call these primitive, primitive methods because they're simple commands. We're just giving him a move, a turn, a roll, you know. Just, it's, it's simple. We don't have him running in place, basically with his uh, feet moving. If you look, I'll save later. If you look, he's just jumping and his legs stay the same. This is all primitive. 
Now if we get advanced, we can actually have them bend at the kneecap, take jump, lifting in the air, and then coming down with his knees bending and then him stiffening, uh, stiffening straight up. So it uh, looks like an animation of a jump. Those are advanced. And the other things we have are, uh, we have method calls and uh, arguments. Basically, a method, uh, calling of the method or calling the method is just, um, you're giving it instructions uh, of what the object's going to move within that method. So this is calling of the method. We're telling the hair, our object, to go up one meter and then come down one meter and doing it within a half a second. And that's what we call a method call, is when it's actually being executed. Um, passing the argument, arguments, is um, when you call a method and you provide the necessary uh, argument, uh, arg, arguments. Argument. Oh, I can't even say the words. Arguments. Yes, there we go. Ar argumentation is basically what I'm trying to say. Basically what that is, is any piece of information that we tell the method uh, to do, which is required to run the method. So this is an ar argumentation. We're telling it to go up. If we didn't give it to go up or to go one meter, basically this would be the object moves and that's it. We didn't tell it to do anything. There's no argument um, to uh, execute. So this method would be basically nothing. You, you put a method in there, but you have no argument to tell it what to do. So without that, the uh, method can't run. And this is what we call passing the arguments. We're telling it to the method what to do, and uh, how far, or how long, how fast, all, you know, all the different variables. Uh, and then, like I told you, the primitive. And if you look here, we have move, we have turn, we have roll, resize. I mean, a lot of this is self-explanatory of what it's going to do. Just remember, this is going to move, turn, roll. All this resize is at its center point because we have nothing else clicked but the object, the hair. If we click you know, further detailed and go to his leg, you'll see the object change to left leg. So now we're telling that left leg to move, and it's going to move at its center point. To say it's going to bring up uh, text, if you, if you hover over with your mouse, it usually will tell you what it's going to do. Of course, it doesn't want to work now. Okay, I just want to make sure the program's still... Okay, it's still... Okay, we're still working. I, I just don't know. I think I broke it. It... it Normally when you hover over it, it'll bring you up a little information box of this is what it's going to do. Like here, he can say something, we can make him think something, we could play a sound. Um, again, this is if you have another object or something, or even the camera, you could tell the hair to move to it. Um, a lot of different things. Again, these, these are all called primitive methods. So, let's say I want to make this hair He's jumping, but let's say I want to have him spin in the air, you know, mid-air. Um, how do I do that? Well, with this, we're going to drag and turn, and we're going to put it in between the jump. Now we want to have him spin, let's say, to the left. Yeah, we'll make it to the left. And we want him to spin in a full circle, so one revolution. Again, how fast do we want it? Mm, we don't want it too fast, so one second's good. So we can leave it at its default setting at one second. So now if we play that, he'll spin, and then come back down. So let's make him say, hey, that was cool, you know? So we're going to uh, grab in a say, and we're going to put other. We can have him say hello, goodbye, you know, the simple ones, but we're going to have it say another. When it says enter a string, that's basically telling it a command. We're telling that string, that say command, what to do. Uh, and what we're going to have is we're going to make it say that was fun. So now when we play that, there we 